Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, October 24th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Harmonic tremor at uh, on the Reykjanes Peninsula has been continuing for the last week. An eruption is imminent, and we're keeping a close eye on it for you. We've got Texas under threat of tornadoes and Jamaica under threat of a major hurricane. Buckle up, Buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. Tropical Storm Melissa forecast to become a major hurricane by Sunday afternoon and bring catastrophic flash flooding and landslides, well, to Jamaica initially. But let's take a look. Here is the current position of Melissa. Maximum sustained winds at 65 miles per hour. This baby will become a hurricane by morning, a minor one at that, but a major hurricane by Sunday afternoon. Uh, let's take a look. The models are all agreeing, except for one, that for the next three days, this is going to intensify into a major hurricane just south of Jamaica and make its way directly across Jamaica and up and out past Cuba in the next five days. Holy macaroni, a lot to talk about. And as this lingers, that means the flooding threat is increasing. And with the increased winds, potentially bad news for Jamaica. Due to Melissa's slow motion, a prolonged multi-day period of damaging winds and heavy rainfall resulting in potentially catastrophic flash flooding and numerous landslides is likely to begin late Saturday and into Sunday for Jamaica. There is an increasing risk of life-threatening storm surge when the center of Melissa nears Jamaica early next week. Preparations to protect life and property should be rushed to completion. This is no joke, and it looks like Jamaica will be a direct hit. In Haiti, heavy rainfall will result in catastrophic flash flooding and landslides across southwestern Haiti into early next week. Extensive damage to roads and buildings is expected, potentially isolating communities for an extended period of time. Immediate preparations to protect life and property should be taken. Strong winds could also potentially last for a day or more over the Turabrun Peninsula of Haiti. In the Dominican Republic, heavy rainfall could produce potentially catastrophic flash flooding and numerous landslides in southern portions of the Dominican Republic. Eastern Cuba and the Bahamas Interest in Cuba and the Bahamas should monitor the progress of Melissa since there's an increasing risk of significant storm surge, damaging winds, heavy rainfall by the middle of next week. The risk of life-threatening flash flooding and landslides in eastern Cuba are increasing as the models are all agreeing. Well, it is coming across eastern Cuba. There is now an 80% chance of that. Hopefully, Jamaica will break down the storm if it does move directly over the island, uh, there will be some reduction in strength. So that's good news for Cuba. And as we said on the outset here, Texas is under threat of tornadoes, flash flooding as severe storms roll across the southern plains. It's insane. The good news is that NOAA's Weather Prediction Center has placed parts of West and Central Texas under a level two out of five risk, which is one of the lowest. We do have some severe weather warnings, six severe weather warnings currently, all of them in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. They were in Oklahoma. These storms will dissipate overnight. So go over to tornadohq.com live severe weather map for all of your updates. And it was a big hail day yesterday. Hey, hey. The hail map for Thursday, October 23rd was epic. And most of it was, well, you guessed it, Oklahoma. 46,178 impacted by one-inch hail or larger, and 6,154 households impacted by gorilla hail in the fall. That's six square miles of gorilla hail. Holy macaroni. And now the full forecast. Severe thunderstorms and flash flooding threat for the southern U.S. with an atmospheric river in the Pacific Northwest. Severe thunderstorms and areas of heavy to excessive rainfall are forecast over parts of the southern plains into the lower Miss Mississippi Valley through the weekend. 
An atmospheric river followed by a Pacific storm will bring periods of gusty winds with low elevation, heavy rain, and high elevation snow to parts of the northwest U.S. through the weekend. You can see those watches and warnings, flood warnings and watches from Oklahoma through Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, to the east there. Freeze and frost warnings out for the mid-Atlantic all the way back here into the Ohio River Valley, and that atmospheric river is going to push on into the Pacific Northwest bringing, well, winter weather advisories and brown stuff. Yeah, I guess that's high wind. I guess. A quick look over here at the GFS model, and we'll walk it through here. You can see that uh, atmospheric river is already entering the Pacific Northwest. That is the line of storms that's going to bring trouble from Oklahoma through central Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Here's Saturday. Right now, this is about what it looks like. Overnight, it's going to explode and move into Louisiana by Sunday morning. And we can see by the end of the weekend, that storm in the Pacific Northwest is going to be in full force. By the end of the weekend and into Monday, that storm will push down into the southern Rockies, bringing snow to the northern Rockies of Colorado. I know that's a lot of different directions there. Here we are by early midweek, uh, early next week, Monday, Tuesday, we're going to have a lot of moisture in the southeast as a new line of storms is developing here Tuesday and we'll be bombing out in the center of the U.S. there, moving down to the southeast by the end of the weekend as another atmospheric river hits the Pacific Northwest. A good place to check is total snowfall. Al Gore will not be happy about this. Let's move it through. Here is your Friday into Saturday, Sunday, Ah, Sunday is going to be the big snow day. Here is Monday morning, all day Monday. Here is Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, epic snow is going to be dropping in British Columbia. Record territory, 10 feet in the next four days. Those are some insane numbers. And as we move through the first week of November into early mid-November, it looks like the Northeast is really going to be big winter chicken dinner, as well as the Ohio River Valley. Not much going on in the beginning of November for the West, but all that snow will have piled up in BC and Alberta by then. We're keeping a close eye on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Seismicity has dropped off, but seismic tremor has been on the uptick for the last seven days. We're well overdue for an eruption. There are over four cubic kilometers of magma just under the surface, and well, it's go time. Seismic update. No real quakes of note. A series of quakes in Alaska is raising eyebrows. But overall, worldwide, low-level activity. Good news there. Interstellar Comet 3i Atlas is blasting a jet towards the sun once again. It did this as it came into the sun. It changed, and now it's doing it as it moves its way away from the sun. That's some interesting stuff. The interstellar comet is behaving just like any other comet, from our solar system. And no, it's not a spaceship. Lee and I will break it all down tomorrow on our science show. And that brings us to space weather. Coronal holes entering the picture. Flaring is in the B range. Nothing to talk about. All quiet on the western front as we rapidly drop into solar minimum. A strange object between Saturn and Uranus. I love to say that, or Uranus, is evolving its own ring system according to a new study. You've heard of it before. It's called Chiron. Now, astronomers have found signs that the small, icy world of Chiron orbiting between Saturn and Uranus may be forming a new ring system in near real time. This is going to be a great time to study these objects and to maybe come to some conclusions about what's going on there. But I assure you, other than it being absolute zero outside, there is no ice on Chiron. But it is icy cold. A crater just discovered suggests that an asteroid hit Guangdong 10,000 years ago with a blast like 40 atomic bombs. Scientists discover a large bowl-shaped impact crater, the fifth found in China and the first in the country's southern region. It's hard to find stuff here because weathering is prevalent. It rains all the time. There are trees and vegetation that break down the structures. But this crater rim is, well, very obvious and quite large and quite recent. 
And Lee and I will be breaking this all down on our science show tomorrow. And we will be replaying this at 8 p.m. Mountain Time over at Rumble on Magnetic Reversal News. So buckle up, Buttercup. We will also be talking about the oldest structure ever found, a 289 million year old discovery in Oklahoma. And no, it's not a house or a hut or a skyscraper. It, it wasn't made by man. There were no men or humans or hominids or anything around 289 million years ago. Just some fishes um, and some other small weird, weird creatures that were uh, amphibians and maybe some early lizards. But what we're talking about is a 289 million year old stalactite from an Oklahoma cave. A remarkable find that challenges our understanding of ancient Earth's climate and evolution because this, well, stalagmite is still sitting there. Absolutely pristine for 300 million years. That's really bizarre. We'll break it all down tomorrow on The Science Show. And, well, what do you think? Leave a comment below. We talked about this earlier in the week, uh, this article, Carl Skeletons Left by a Medieval Tsunami Whisper a Warning for the Caribbean Region. Well, not only are hurricanes uh, a major problem for the Caribbean region, they could set off major earthquakes, like south of Cuba. During this event... With this major hurricane moving up towards Cuba, it could set off an 8-magnitude earthquake due to the low-pressure system, which could trigger a major tsunami. So not only are you dealing with a hurricane, you're dealing with a major tsunami at the same time. And we're not making this up. It's based on evidence. With a new paper released, Dating a Medieval Tsunami with Ukrainian Series Techniques on Caribbean Corals. We now know that major low-pressure systems can trigger major earthquakes along major fault lines. And we're about to see this tested in the next four or five days as Tropical Storm Melissa becomes Hurricane Melissa, then moves its way over uh, the Cuba Trench there, and it could be boom time, folks. Cross your fingers, it doesn't happen, but it is a possibility that I'm bringing to the forefront here. This is new science. It has been proven in the last decade, and we're going to watch it real time what develops here. So hopefully, nothing bad develops. What has already developed is a growing weak spot in Earth's magnetic field, the South Atlantic Anomaly. And the weak field region has expanded by a size larger than Europe. We've talked about it, and we're going to recover this in just a moment, 9 p.m. Mountain Time over at Magnetic Reversal News on YouTube. South Atlantic Anomaly growing rapidly. This is our science show, Science Without Consensus, which a new program will be premiering tomorrow night on Rumble on Magnetic Reversal News. Tonight is the replay over on YouTube at Magnetic Reversal News of last week's show. So go get it and get informed and get up to date on the most current science and scientific interpretation possible. And that is a boom to knowledge. Thanks for watching the channel. We love each and every one of you. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you can. Half of you watching now are unsubscribed. And our goal is to hit 100,000 and we need your help. So just hit that subscribe button. You don't even have to get the notifications because they won't give them to you anyway. <laughs> and that is a boom to knowledge. Be safe. We love you. Yeah.